Well, Pope was here. The book wasn't here. Warren, in the Syria book isn't in the store yet. It's too, I mean, it should come out already. They can't rush it up. Should have been out in the store already, but okay, it's on Amazon. You could buy it now and get the first edition, first printing. There, got a winner. Got a winner. Michael on line eight. Go ahead. Who, who wrote The Hollow Man? T.S. Eliot. I was wrong. It was not who I said. It's because I've been following the news too long. Do you know the whole poem? Do I? No, I don't know the whole poem. I just remember. So how do you how do you know it was T. S. Eliot who wrote the Hollow Man? Uh, let's see. If I remember correctly, I, we had to do that in eighth grade when <laughs> education was still relevant. Yeah. Well, today it's about uh, something else, isn't it? Today, today, they, today they teach you uh, wrap a pig in bacon. That's the new literature. Let me tell you one thing. My we we are the hollow men. We are the stuffed men, leaning together, headpiece filled with straw. Our dried voices, when we whisper together, are quiet and meaningless. As wind and dry grass, or rat's feet over broken glass in a dry cellar. Does that not sound like the entire political structure in our country? The hollow men, the stuffed men, leaning together, headpieces filled with straw. And he goes on. Shape without form, shade without color, paralyzed force, gesture without motion. Is that ever appropriate for who the leadership is now of the United States and of Britain and all of the West? Definitely prophetic. Violent souls, but only as the hollow men, the stuffed men. You hear this? Eyes I dare not meet in dreams in death's dream kingdom. These do not appear. There the eyes are sunlight in a broken column. There is a tree swinging and voices are in the wind singing. More distant and more solemn than a fading star. Let me be no nearer in death's dream kingdom. Let me also wear such deliberate disguises. Rat's coat, crow skin, cross staves. In a field behaving as the wind behaves. No nearer. Not that final meeting in the twilight kingdom. This is the dead land. This is cactus land. Here the stone images are raised. Here they receive the supplication of a dead man's hand under the twinkle of a fading star. It is like this in death's other kingdom. Waking alone at the hour when we are trembling with tenderness. Lips that would kiss from prayers to broken stone. Read it for yourself. The hollow man describes especially the administration of Barack Obama filled with the straw men like Josh Ernest. You win a copy of Ring the Bell, Government Zero. T.S. Eliot, the hollow man, they don't teach him anymore because he's a dead white male. No, he, he couldn't write. No, it takes someone who has an ed education. Uh, well, uh, let me stop right there because I don't want to get myself into trouble. Yeah, that's that's a colleges today. Yeah, the co college boy walking around the pants under pants under his behind. That's what they put into college. The underwear showing the, the, the behind crack. That's a rape epidemic. And I wonder why that happened on the college campuses. How that all of a sudden occur? Uh, where'd that come from? The Hollow Men is a poem by T.S. Eliot's themes are like many of Eliot's poems, overlapping and fragmentary, but it is recognized to be... That's nonsense. Whoever wrote that didn't even know what the poem was about. And here's the funny thing. If you look at a picture of T.S. Eliot, he looked like a banker. They didn't try to be cool. They didn't look like hipsters. He didn't have a big beard like a moron smoking an electronic marijuana cigarette. He had like wire rim glasses, a shirt and tie, neatly dressed... That's what a poet was. Today, a poet is the stupid they can be, the druggy they can be, the more idiotic they can look from Brooklyn. They're a poet. I love when they say he's an artist and she's a poet, and they live. They found her in a doorway upside down at three thirty in the morning in Chelsea. That's the world I have to live in. This I have to make sense out of all of this for you. What time is it already? Forty-five minutes, forty-six minutes, forty-seven minutes after the hour. I don't have time for a call. I'll have time the minute I come back. Either be here or you know what, be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. It started me talking about the scale, then the blood lab then shut down the government until our borders are sealed and stop Obama in his tracks, period. I mean, the Republicans have the power of the purse strings. I say shut it down. I don't care what stops working. I don't care if the air airplanes stop flying. How's that? Meaning if they shut down the FAA, shut it down. Shut this country down until Obama learns his lesson that he's not a monarch. He doesn't have the power he thinks he has. Shut him down. 
cut off the funding, close the borders, and stop the influx of Muslim refugees from the Middle East, especially young Syrian men, because my opinion is quite different than you may think. You think these people are running because they're running from who? Assad? I think that many of them are ISIS who threw down their weapons and are running from the Russians. I think they knew the Russians were coming and they started flooding out of the country like rats from a sinking ship because they could no longer kill innocent Christians who are disarmed. They could no longer rape eight, eight year old girls and have fun with girls and women. They're fleeing and they're going to bring them in my country without vetting them? And you're going to put up with this? Shut it down. Simple. Shut it down. Close down the government. And I say definitively shut the government down. I don't care if the planes don't fly. I don't, I don't care if Amtrak runs. I don't care if the, if the postal service doesn't deliver a letter. Shut it down. Squeeze this country until they finally respond to the people. And you say, well, who's going to do it for us? Well, the Republicans have the majority. And if they don't do it, keep a track of them. Keep a track on them. Write it down and throw them all out of office in, in 2016. Diselect them. Throw them out of office until we finally get a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, instead of government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Now let's go to the callers. Jonathan on KBET. Jonathan, go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, thank you so much for your voice, and thanks for reading uh, T.S. Eliot over the air. That was my favorite poem taught to me by my favorite uncle, and uh, that's, that's my favorite poem of all time. So you say that the last stanza of the Hollow Men is most chilling and representative of what we have today uh, in, guise, uh, in the guise of leadership in America. Can you read that to us? I will recite it from memory. This is how the world ends. This is how the world ends. This is how the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. You know, that sounds like Obama. This is how America ends. This is how America ends. This is how America ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. It's chilling. Well, you know, when he talked about the hollow men, the straw men, he was talking about Josh Ernst. He was talking about the leadership that is lacking in the West of hollow men who just talk and there's nothing there. The straw men that we all know about. Stay on the line. I'm sending you a book which I hope becomes a part of your library, Government Zero, by myself, Michael Savage. No borders, no language, no culture. When I come back, there's another full hour right here on the Savage Nation. I'll admit it to you. The minute this hour ends, I'm rushing to the radio kitchen, and I'm going to polish off that Thai food, and I'll be back for you, replenished, blood sugar high, and ready to go for another big hour, right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I'm talking about Barack Obama. Tony Blair, David Cameron, Holland, most specifically the hollow fat slob in Germany, Merkel. Uh, unbelievable. You talk about hollow people who are killing their own nations in death dream kingdom. These hollow people permitting Islamic enemies to overrun their countries in the name of humanity. It's hard to believe. Can you name one Muslim country? where you could say their, their, their humanity exceeds that of the West? Can you name one, please? Why are we doing this? Why is Obama wanting to flood America with 200,000 Syrian refugees, 80% of whom are combat-age men, without any chance of vetting them, meaning finding out their background? Why? Can you not figure it out? There is a tree swinging and voices are in the wind singing more distant and more solemn than a fading star. Read the poem. You'll find out that the... Uh, the uh, dead old white male, T.S. Eliot, might have had something that you missed while you were studying gender studies at Harvard. Mr. Kurtz, he dead. A penny for the old guy. Welcome back to the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282. If you just joined the program, I suspect you missed an awful lot. 
which will be on the final exam. We're having midterms, by the way, uh, in exactly uh, one week after Halloween, Savage Nation midterms. We will ask you about clauses in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights that you don't even know about, that I invented. From a book I wrote about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and clauses that I invented to make you think I'm smarter than I really am. Randy on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hello, Michael. Uh, you need to rethink the uh, shutting down of the government, asking the uh, Republicans to shut down the government. It's uh, very uh, irresponsible because you're delegating responsibility to the Republicans. And there are things in life that you just can't delegate, like fatherhood. It is up to the people to shut down the government and to take back this country not the republicans the public the republicans they're good fellas they're uh they're like uh paul savino and uh, joe pesci and uh good fellas you're uh, saying you're basically low grade criminals of the world. They're all part of Competence. We understand that. Take a look at what just happened in France when Air France said they were going to fire people. The workers went crazy and almost killed the management. They got, one guy got away with his with his suit ripped off. The French understand that they actually have the power. The French worker knows he has the power. But you tell me who has the power in America? Who in America in the middle class has the power? It's the thugs in Baltimore who have the power. It's the thugs who almost burned. Uh, Baltimore to the ground that have been empowered by this administration. They are armed to the teeth. You never hear Obama say he wants to take the guns away from those thugs, does he? Does Obama and Hold Holder, when he was in power, does Obama ever say he wants to take the guns out of the hands of the gangbangers in Ferguson? Or those who were killing police in an epidemic? No, he's targeting those of us who want to defend ourselves from them and from the invaders he's bringing in. So what would you do to shut this country down in order to tell them no more immigrants? Shut it down. What would you do to stop them? I would organize economically and shut down the shut down our economic system. Uh, did you read the uh, thirteen answers to your thirteen questions that you had posed? I had sent you an email on thirteen answers to your. No, I didn't know you. I didn't read that one. Well, you remember that show? You're a pretty good listener. So, give me. How would we? conduct an economic boycott to shut the country down quickly how would that work I, I i can tell you in 25 words or less we who are the economic engine can bring the gravy train to a halt how uh well do you ever see how uh, how powerful and how effective the democrats are when they uh conduct boycotts and shut and shut yes, businesses. yes, I've been a victim of the Democrats for 21 years. I've been a victim of the slime machine and the boycott machine for 21 years, and I've paid dearly for it. So I'm very aware of what they can do. It's better than that, because we have more economic power than they than they do. We fight the war of attrition, and uh, I'll give you some examples. These are at the bottom of the list, but uh, stop flying. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving, don't go shopping. Don't buy a new car. These are just some of the things that can be done. But here's the problem. They will never connect the dots. They'll never figure out that it's about bringing Muslim refugees in from Syria or flooding America with Central American or Mexicans. They'll never put two and two together. I think we need more direct action than that. We need to use the tactics of the left, which is direct action. And the only thing that is direct and actionable are a million people on the border or a million people shutting down a federal uh, a building. That's the only thing that will work. Nothing else will work. That's the only thing that will scare the hollow men into into li listening to the people. I, I disagree with you. Yours is a, is a good idea, but it's too esoteric and it's too distant. It's not connected directly to this corrupt and competent government that wants to commit self-suicide and national suicide at the same time. Well, you hold the power to, to bring this about. 
It's like, me? Do you think God brought you back? Well, I don't know about the power. Here's what I do. I have a daily radio show, three hours a day, and I write books. That's it.